Hey everyone, it's day 11 and today on the show we'll actually implement our router where you'll be able to click on different menu items and activate different components within our application. It's going to be awesome. So we have our application, but it has no routing yet. We've got these menus, but they don't actually do anything. And if we were to have a look at that file, we know in fact that in our menu component, these aren't even active links. So let's go about implementing our routing logic so we can actually start routing around our applications displaying different components. So first of all, because we are using a component-oriented framework, it makes sense for messages and friends to be their own components. So let's first of all create those straight from the command line. So we did our ngc generate component, and I'm going to call a messages component. And then once that's done, I'm going to generate ngc a friends component. And these are the components that we hope to switch to when we change to these menu items. So that's our first step. Now, routing in the new Angular router is done, uh, is kicked off typically in a file in your app directory that you're going to call app.routing.ts. And I'm just going to paste in a sample one that I've prepared earlier because there's quite a lot of boilerplate in this file. And I'll just reformat that. Okay, so here is the basics of our app routing ts file. I'm going to save that and let that compile in the background. So in our app routing ts, we specify the routes and the components they'll go to. So when the user is going to type in slash feed, now you notice we don't prefix it with a slash, we goes to a feed component. When it goes to friends, a friends component, messages to our messages component. This first one's a little peculiar, but this is the actual route. If they type in no path, what we want to do is redirect them to feed. Okay, so that's a little bit of magic there. Now, once we've defined this routes array in our app routes, we then have to tell our module about it. So our next step is to actually import this into our module. So if we go into our app module, we'll just import this routing and our routing provider, and then we'll actually import our routing here. Oops, routing, and then in our providers, we'll put in our routing providers, which is called app routing providers. Okay, so we've updated our module to tell it about the routing for this module. We now have an actual routing module that specifies what paths go to what components. Our next step is to actually start doing some work with our HTML. Now, in the root of our application, we displayed a menu component and a feed component. Well, that's not going to work anymore because depending on what you select in the menu, we have to switch between what component we display here. Now, the router handles that by providing a new element called router outlet. Now, this is the part that the router uh, is going to uh, dynamically substitute based on the path that you're navigating to. So if you're going to go slash feed, it's going to substitute this for the feed component. If you're going to go slash messages, it'll substitute this for the messages component and so on. So that's all in there. So the last really piece of the puzzle is in our menu component itself. We need those links that currently don't do anything to actually point to different links in the router. And the way that we do that is through a router link element. So in our home, we've presently said this is the active item. We can't actually force it to be the active item anymore. We want that to be dynamic based on the path they're typing in. So there's a new router link element that we can put in here, which says, take it to the feed route and work out where that goes and, and substitute that into our component tree where you need to. And we need we can also set a router link active style element. So this is what styling do we want to apply when we actually route to that link. And in our case, that's going to be uh, active, which is the CSS style that um, denotes that this menu is the actual selected one. So let's just kind of copy and paste our way through these guys. Uh, and we will um, update that to be slash messages and this to be slash uh, friends. Okay, once we've saved all those, we should actually have a, we notice that when we go to the root component, it's auto navigated to slash feed. So if I take that out, again, we see it auto navigates because we said that we wanted to redirect to slash feed component. If we to navigate to the messages tab, we'll see that it's now the messages component that's being displayed. And if we went into the friends tab, we'll see the friends component is now being displayed. And that was just the template text that we generated when we did our ng generate component. Of course, the HTML just had the body of whatever the component name was. So we've now actually got a working menu that has home messages and friends. Tomorrow at the show, we're going to uh, make things a little bit trickier in the router by 
being able to do deep linking. So I don't want to just go to friends. In this case, I want to go to friends Joe or friends Mary and deep link into that particular point within the friends component. And we'll talk about how you can pass those IDs into that component and how you can resolve them at runtime. So that's going to be fun. Look forward to catching you tomorrow for that one.